Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Hendrickson. This is another special episode in honor of National Poetry Month. You may or may not have been aware, but on April 14th, 2018, we marked the 106th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. This was a great tragedy in human history and probably will never be forgotten. I hope that through my podcasting, I have encouraged you to pursue more literary adventures or visit your local library more often. Now let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. The Titanic Disaster Poem by J.H. McKenzie On the cold and dark Atlantic, the night was growing late. Steamed the maiden ship Titanic, crowded with human freight. She was valued at ten million, the grandest ever roamed the seas, fitted complete to swim the ocean when the rolling billows freeze. She bade farewell to England, all dressed in robes of white, going out to plow the briny deep and was on her western flight. She was now so swiftly gliding in L. 50 and 14, when the watchman viewed the monster, just a mile from it t'was seen. Warned by a German vessel, of an enemy just ahead, of an iceberg that sea monster, that which the seamen dread. On steamed this great Titanic, she was in her swiftest flight, she was trying to break the record on that fearful, fearful night. Oh, she was plowing the ocean, for speed not known before, but alas, she struck asunder to last forevermore. A wireless message began to spread throughout the mighty deep, it said, We have struck an iceberg, being delayed, please rush to us with aid. The captain of the White Star Line, who stood there in command, was an admiral of seasoned mind en route to the western land. The captain thought not of his life, but stood there to the last, and swimming saved a little child as it came floating past. Outstretched hands offered reward for his brave and heroic deed, but the intrepid man went down aboard, trying to rescue a passenger instead. This ill-starred giant of the sea was carried to his grave. On the last and greatest ship was he that ever cleft a wave. Gay was the crew aboard this ship, passengers large and small. They viewed the coming danger, they felt it one and all. On played the grand orchestra, their notes were soft and clear. They realized God's power on land, on sea t'was just as near. So they played this glorious anthem, continued on the sea, and repeated the beautiful chorus, Nearer my God to thee. Then silenced when the ship went down, their notes were heard no more. Surely they'll wear a starry crown on that celestial shore. Colonel Astor, a millionaire, scholarly and profound, said to his wife, I'll meet you, dear, tomorrow in your town. His bride asked a seaman true, Oh, say, may husband go. The echo came upon the blue. He answered, He may, you know. This man rushed not to his seat. He seemed to have no fear. Being calm, serene, and discreet, tendered it to a lady near. Oh, go, he said, my darling wife. Please be not in despair. Be of good cheer, as sure as life. I'll meet you over there. Well, could he have known this dreadful night, the sea would be his grave, though he worked with all his might for those whom he could save. This man a soldier once had been of military art, proved himself full competent then to do his noble part. Major Butt, well known to fame, a lady did entreat, to kindly name him to his friends whom she perchanced to meet. He realized the men to realize the weaker they should save. He gave his life with no surprise to the sea a watery grave. And with a smile upon his face, he turned to meet his fate. Soon, soon the sea would be his grave in an ever after date. And Strauss, who did the children feed, had mercy on the poor, and all such men the world doth need, to reverence evermore. Oh, may the union of Strauss and wife be memorial to all men. Each for the other gave their life a life we should commend. And may all girls who chance in life 
to read this poem through, emulate the deed of such a wife as went down in the blue. Down, down goes the great Titanic with faster and faster speed, until, alas, there comes a burst, she bade farewell indeed. Farewell, farewell to land and seas, farewell to wharves and shore, for I must land beneath the breeze to reach the land no more. I carry with me more human weight than ever recorded before. To leave them on a land sedate, they will land, oh, land no more. Only a few, you see, may tell the story of this great calamity. Husband and wives, perhaps in glory, view the sad catastrophe. The Carpathia eastern bound for the Mediterranean Sea turned to the mighty sound, the wireless CQD. Quick was the preparation made to warn the unfortunate few, for the homeless was cold and delayed, being chilled by the wind as it blew. So to the youth, through life has started, be ever thoughtful and true. Stay by the truth, be not departed, success shall come to you. Oh, may you shun the iceberg, by the dreadful work was wrought, and prosper by the lesson this mighty ship has taught. Thank you for listening to this special episode in honor of National Poetry Month. Please join us next time as we continue with Robinson Crusoe and we read the story, Robinson Crusoe's First Home on the Island, written by Daniel Defoe. Today's music was provided by the artist Drake Stafford. For more information to download and or listen to audio from all our recordings, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com. And as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day.